Hey friends, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to talk about two Logic Pro preferences that I've been getting a lot of questions about that I truly believe that 99.9% .9 of us Logic users are never ever going to have to touch. You don't even have to look at them if you don't want to. But in all of the years that I've been using Logic from 8 to 9, 9 to 10, I've never had to adjust these two preferences. And I believe that some users are digging into them because they're trying to fix latency issues in their project. And there's just a much better way of handling latency than these audio preferences. So if you go up to Logic Pro 10 here, Preferences, the Audio tab. The two I want to hone in on are Recording Delay, right here in the Devices tab, and Plugin Latency Compensation within the General tab. Let's start with Plugin Latency. Now, what is Plugin Latency Compensation? Well, as you work on your Logic projects, and you're adding instruments and plugins and routing, your projects are getting increasingly complicated. And it takes time. It takes your Mac and Logic Pro time to manage everything that's going on in your sessions. And some plugins require more time than others to process. So you can easily tell if there are plugins in your sessions that require some extra time to process just by hovering your mouse over each of the plugins. So if I just hover my mouse over Guitar Rig here, the banner that's gonna pop up is just gonna tell me the name of the plugin and any timing discrepancy. And as you can see, it just says the name of the plugin. If I bounce down to Pro Q3, just says the name of the plugin, okay? Everything's looking good. Either there's no latency caused by these plugins or it's so small, it's not worth mentioning. And most of the plugins in Logic do not create any sort of delay in our projects. Channel EQ, compressor. But now I'm gonna hover my mouse over the Sound Choice plugin called Devil Lock Deluxe. And you can see here, that the Devil Lock Deluxe introduces 63 samples of delay or 1.4 milliseconds. So with plugin latency compensation set to its default mode of all, Logic does all the hard math to make sure that your tracks play in time together when you hit play. Again, I don't ever adjust plugin latency compensation, but for the sake of discussion, let's see what some of these other options offer us. So I have a heavy kind of sludgy metal riff here, and let's just take a listen to this with the setting as is. Okay, everything plays in time as I expect it to, wonderful. But now let's try adjusting plugin latency compensation and turning it off. Now let's take a listen to the results. So that doesn't sound too good. Everything's kind of out of time with each other. Now the responsibility of managing these delays in our project are up to us. And that's just something I'm not willing to deal with. Not in this modern era of sophisticated DAWs. So what's up with this audio and software instruments tracks option? Well, let's set it to that and take a listen. Okay, everything sounds pretty good, right? Let's hone in on just our drummer track here though. And I have a parallel compression channel, also using the Devil Lock Deluxe, and let's bring that to full blast. Now let's take a listen to these drums by themselves. So as you can hear, it sounds like there's a phaser somewhere in the project related to the drums, but I can assure you that there is no phaser in this project. So what's the deal? Well, with plugin latency compensation set to audio and software instrument tracks, it's only compensating for delays for those types of tracks, but it's not compensating for buses, sends, and auxiliary channels. So we have a delay, which is creating this phasey sound. So if I set this back to all, let's take a listen. And it sounds exactly as I expected to. So again, I don't ever adjust this parameter. It doesn't matter if you're bouncing or recording or mixing. I leave it set to all and I never look at it. So now let's dig into the recording delay option. Recording delay could be useful. I imagine if you have an audio interface maybe that's giving you troubles and it's reporting time late to logic. I have no idea, but recording delay essentially when we record audio into logic, we can tell logic to either bump it back in time have it play sooner rather than later, 
or we can bump it forward so it plays later instead of sooner. Now, by default, it should be set to zero samples, but you can go as early as negative 5,000 samples or as late as 5,000 samples. Now, again, I don't ever mess with this feature, but for the sake of conversation, let's push back the recording delay by 5,000 samples. I have this DI track here with guitar rig, and I'm just gonna play along to these drums, and we're gonna hear my performance against the drums, and then we're gonna hear the result of the recording delay option here. So let me just solo my track here, and let's play along. Okay, sounded like I was playing in time, right? Well, let's take a listen to the resulting audio. And the result is predictably late. So again, I leave this parameter set to zero milliseconds. I don't ever fuss with it. I believe that some Logic users are digging into these audio preferences because of latency in their projects. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, let me just get rid of this track for now. Now, what is latency? Latency is when you play your guitar chord, you play your piano, you sing into your microphone, and the sound of the chord being played, the vocals being sung, is late in your headphones or in your studio monitors. And who could possibly record under those conditions? You wanna hear the sound as soon as you play it. Now, the most fundamental way to deal with latency is to go up to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, Audio, and to adjust the I.O. buffer size. Now, when we set the I.O. buffer to a smaller number, what results is, is less delay in the signal path as we're recording our tracks. So first things first, if you're experiencing latency or a delay in your headphones or in your studio monitors, I suggest adjusting the buffer size to a smaller number. Now there is such thing as too small, and if your Mac can't keep up and work fast enough at some of these smaller sizes, such as 32 or 64, you could experience pops, clicks, artifacts in the recorded audio once you're done recording. So I always work with an IO buffer size of 128. That works well for me. But maybe you've recorded a lot of your tracks, you've mixed, you've thrown a ton into your session, but then you realize you gotta get that last shaker track in there to really finish the track off. And when you try to record, and it doesn't matter what you set the IO buffer size to, no matter what, you're experiencing latency when you're trying to record. The easiest way to deal with latency is to use low latency mode, which is this button right here in the control bar. If you don't see it, just right click or control click anywhere in the empty space of the control bar and select customize control bar and display. And under the modes and functions category, you should see a label for low latency mode. Just enable this and you should see the button pop up. Hit okay. Now let's open the mixer. What low latency mode does is when we turn it on, any plugins or routing that is creating latency in our projects is turned off or grayed out. So you can see that one of my buses has been grayed out. If we introduce the adaptive limiter to this DI track, and let me close it out, you can see that it's been grayed out. And that's because the adaptive limiter causes too much of a time delay in the signal, so it needs to be turned off temporarily so we can record without latency. And if I turn low latency mode off, everything's reintroduced. Perfect. So this is the easiest way to deal with latency. If you have a big project, lots of plugins, lots of routing, Use low latency mode to temporarily turn off those plugins and routing so you can record your track. Now for some users, low latency mode is not ideal. You know, they don't want their heavy duty reverbs and routing to be turned off while they're trying to record. But in that case, I would suggest using reverb or delay or whatever that doesn't take as much processing power to implement while you're trying to record. But if this really is a problem for you, you can go to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, under Audio, and go to the General tab, and we have this section here for limit. So this limit section is typically grayed out when low latency mode is off. You can actually tell Logic where the limit is for low latency mode. So let's just adjust the slider so we allow more of a timing discrepancy. Now, even though I've adjusted the limit, obviously the adaptive limiter and the routing is still too long for the limit. So we can just change out the adaptive limiter for maybe something that doesn't require as much time. And the multipressor is a latency inducing plugin, but it's only of two milliseconds. So if we go back, 
And if we adjust this down to two or one, you can see that now the multipressor is grayed out. So you can actually dictate the logic where the limit lies for low latency mode. So you can keep more of your latency inducing plugins. But remember, there's a compromise there. And that compromise is latency while you're trying to record. So as always, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.